All right, ready? <laughs> I don't care about your feelings. That was so odd. <laughs> uh, you'd be left of Lennon. I can't believe you said that. <laughs> oh, geez. You have no power here. What? <laughs> just two brothers. It's just two brothers. <laughs> You know, I, I like how you brought up China. You know, you talked about you know how that's that's a, a you know favorite move of a of a dictatorship or communist government. You know, uh, they they did it for population control, which is part of the reason why Margaret Sanger thought it was a great idea. Uh, she wanted to control a specific population. They just want to control a population in general, along with every everything to do with their lives. But to to touch on that a little bit farther, uh, China's been making some moves here lately, like. Uh, like they they've been busy they've been busy changing what people are allowed to do um in a, in a way that I don't know that I yeah I'll admit I didn't see this one coming I I didn't see that coming they they've 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 banned feminine men from TV uh and that can be everything from broadcasters to musicians to different personalities who may be in tv or movies or music uh anything to do with that uh kind of effeminate yeah i guess i i really equate it to kind of the k-pop kind of culture thing um you know where, where where there was a thing that happened in the in the united states in the 80s with you know glam metal where it was the most femi men you could get would you know get all the girls which is just really backwards it's ridiculous and, and some horrible music in my opinion, but uh, the, China is going as far to saying that, that that that's just not allowed. And I, I've thought about this quite a bit, actually. That why would they say that? Why would they want to do that? Why would they want to, to ban that? Why? Because because they're saying they need to defeminize their men. Why? Why is it? I mean, it's, especially I don't remember what the numbers are off the top of my head, but I want to say it's like. Is it seventy percent male or, or some some ridiculous number that their population is mostly male? Because during that the, the baby thing that you were talking about, they you know they were aborting primarily female babies because everybody wanted to have their one child to be male to carry on the family name and you know all the the stuff that goes along with that. But why why would why would that be important on a mostly male population? I haven't I haven't came to an answer. Why 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 is that important to him? Really? I I, I think we both can make at least an educated guess here. They're trying to build up. Oh, the I, I have tons of guesses. <laughs> I think I have that's tons of guesses, and I think that guess. I think you're actually absolutely right. I, I think they want to avoid a woke military. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we see wokeification of our military. You know, and I, I really don't want to rag on our military too much because, you know, we're, we're coming out. No, I, I agree with you. I, I don't I don't want to do that either. Um, you know, there, there's definitely a segment and, a, and r, r, you know, you always have to keep in mind that the, the liberals are really good at looking like a large number. So when you have, you know, woke people and, and LGBTQWTF, whatever it is that are voicing their opinion in the military, I always keep in mind that that's a very, very, very small percentage of the population. So by no means, when I say that America has a woke military, or we say America has a woke military, or is is be, beginning to be that way, I do not want it to be taken as as a hit against our soldiers in any way. I've, I have a ton of respect for those people, and I, I understand that it's a very small uh, minority of, of our military. But I, I, to your point, I, I think that, that that's probably where they're going with this. It's the only logical answer because it can't be I, – I can't think of any other reason. Unless Xi Jinping is like, uh, you know, we're, we're going to outlaw this because I don't like seeing it. You know, I just – I can't think of any other reason. You know, and with the obvious aggression against Hong Kong, with the obvious aggression that they're starting against Taiwan and, and what is – certainly to come in 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 the future and with their aggression now going into the uh area of afghanistan it really you know i i'm pretty sure that this is happening because they're they're trying to build up their their military and they're trying to masculinize their military yeah that's that's the only that's the only answer i, I really have uh, i just 
it, it it's it's just really interesting to have them make it like a like a law as an american i find that interesting you know what i mean i find it interesting as an american if you put your 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 mind in the place of a communist no it's it's not surprising at all because they'll just make laws and they don't care about you know the the people or, or you know what whatever you know it's definitely not ruling for the people but when to think it think of something like that taking place in the united states that hey we're gonna straight up ban a part of culture because the government doesn't like it i mean they even took it a step further now and and i would be really curious to see how that would fly in the united states when they're when they're saying that you can only play video games for what three hours on a weekend is that what it is is it three hours yeah i believe it's three hours and uh it's uh weekdays monday through thursday uh yeah they're they're not allowing video games to be played <laughs> so so it's only a saturday or sunday or is it just a saturday i thought it was just saturday one hour a day on fridays weekend and public holidays <laughs> Okay, well, the one thing I did notice is, is it does say no online video games. And, and I've seen that in, in a couple of things where it says no online. I guess I haven't dug into it deep enough to see if it's just no video games. I don't know how they'd know. Well, I mean, they could know. What do they say? They have like 100 million cameras or I, I don't know. They have some ridiculous <laughs> amount of cameras. They know. So they might know. <laughs> Come but, on, they know. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I don't... I, you know, and then and then what they do is they say, I mean, could you imagine that in the U.S.? Could you imagine if they did that in the United States? I know of adult men who's a, the largest part of their existence involves playing video games. It's asinine. Come on, let's be honest. It's asinine, but it's when you have when you're the communist party when you're a communist party, all the ones that we know of. We're not talking about the hypothetical communism that hasn't been tried. We're talking about the the real life communism where it is a, an extremely authoritarian government who does whatever is best for that government or whomever is running that and the aspirations that they have your life is just in service of that it is never in service of the individual and you know it's if we thought about that here i mean we would be having uprisings Reddit would explode. <laughs> it, it would be an uprising of people who have no clue how to actually go through with an uprising. <laughs> yeah, right, man. They got all those. On, they got plenty of online video games. They, they're probably excellent at it. Uh, yeah, well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. When 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 you see these guys running around and freehanding a Barrett in Call of Duty, I'd like to see any one of those those boys try that in real life. They'd cry all all day what you don't think they'll just quick scope it <laughs> yeah i i i got me a desert a desert eagle <laughs> you know i've never actually fired a pistol before but we'll pick up a 50 cal you know i mean it, 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 that that uprising i think would be fairly short-lived um one of the things i did find a little bit interesting was they call the, their their that they're that they're fighting or combating video game addiction and they say that that's to blame with some societal ills and making people forget about family responsibilities. That that one that one thing, the family responsibilities thing, I find a little bit interesting because communism hates family unit, right? They like they it's it's all it's it's a one mind, you know. It's it's kind of like that high think man uh, mentality. So I find it really interesting that they're using that as justification for it to say people, you know, that they they they're not involved with their families or it's kind of the breakdown of the family or family responsibility, however they want to word that. I wonder if that's really just in the front for them to try and put a good spin on it or, or if they have kind of a bigger plan because it's weird that they're saying we want to defeminize our men and we also don't want them to play video games. You know, it's kind of interesting that China is doing this and they're saying that it's to combat an addiction as in a health problem they're using a health problem and a uh, as an excuse to take away a freedom 
because, hey, we got to combat this health problem. It's for your own safety. It's for your own good. Well, it's, as long as it's as long as it's, as it's for the greater good, we're we're willing to give up any freedoms. You just give them away. Oh, as long as it's in the service of public health and it's in the service of, oh, you're saying that this is for my own protection. Well, then, and by all means, here, uh, do you want everything I own? <laughs> I mean, the, the only thing is, the only thing is, is you have to keep in mind a, a little bit. I mean, we take a very American view on that, right? I mean, I believe it was Benjamin Franklin that said something to the effect of, you know, no amount of, of, of security is worth sacrificing freedom. And, and, and Chinese will never look at it that way, ever. They'll never look at it that way, ever. They're, they're just, you know, it's what the government says. And, and a lot of it's out of fear. You know, they're going to they're gonna do what the government says because the ramifications for not following the rules are very steep. The, uh, the exact quote is, those who would exchange freedom in exchange for uh, temporary security receive neither. In the long term, they, they absolutely receive neither. Without a doubt. You know, I would almost say temporarily. Do you really, really receive either? I'm not sure about that. Um, also, I just kind of want to bring up in that uh, that ABC article uh, talking about this whole uh, China banning the uh, sissy men from TV. Not, my, not me saying sissy men. That is their telecommunications saying sissy men. That is what they're calling them. Uh, you know, he also said... Uh, he's calling for a national rejuvenation. This is this is all under the guise of, of what this is all under. It's all under national reju uh, rejuvenation. With tighter Communist Party control of business, education, culture, and religion, companies and the public are under increased pressure to align with their vision. Um, but he also goes in and talks about, yes, here it is. Xi Jinping's government uh, wants tighter control over Thai, uh, Chinese internet industry, and it has launched an anti-monopoly data security and other enforcement actions against games and social media providers. And I just find that really interesting that a communist government is issuing an anti-monopoly decree against someone because... I mean, government itself, and especially in the in the, the case of, of communist government, has a monopoly on force against disarmed citizens. They are a monopoly. And I just find that kind of interesting. So I assume that there are some internet companies within China that just aren't doing their bidding. Well, I, I you know, they've had a they've had a fight against, you know, they don't like private business the way it is, you know, I guess. Part of this could be just an excuse to go after internet companies that they don't have their hands in. I mean, you know, like you said, oh, we got this public safety issue. We got to go after you. And, oh, yeah, we don't like the monopolies you have either. Um, that's kind of funny that that's been a subject matter in the United States, you know, as of late as well. Is the, you know, the big tech boys and, and how they have a monopoly over, over certain things. Which uh, we touched on a little bit in, in, our, in our last episode. Um, how... You know, the freedom of speech gets tied into platforms that are privately owned and they get spun into a individual agenda. Um, I don't really think that there's a platform in China that allows anybody to say anything about the government at all. <laughs> <laughs> I would suspect that that doesn't happen like it does in the United States. We're here, we can say, we can say, so far, we can say whatever we want about the government. And, and there's, I mean, that's, we do have, an, uh, have a constitutional amendment that you know is very high on the list of amendments that allows us to do that so far you know that the, those the democrats would really really love really love punishment for for people like us that 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 say how completely ridiculous and stupid they are um i don't see that being the case in china i i, I think that it's either a, a money grab for them or it or it's being used as justification you know, they don't really need justification, but I mean, for a global justification on, on why they're doing that. <laughs> their justification is because we said so. That's their justification. Oh, yeah, that's justification. all the justification they need. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Any questions? <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> I mean, you don't ask them. You don't ask them questions at all. I mean, they, they're going to 
they're going to do their own their own thing and and uh you you better you better toe the mark or, or or they'll they'll take care of you in one way or another uh you know i i just you, a person could talk about what happens in china here you know for a long i mean you could you could just talk about this forever and ever and ever and uh you know i find it really really ridiculous when you say that you know the government is is there is directly against against businesses especially smaller businesses uh, you know, they want to have total control over that. But at the same time, we've seen that here, especially over the last couple of years, where they only want to have a handful of large businesses and get rid of the freedom that small businesses provide, especially for small business owners and especially for the, the, the employees of small business owners, which is still, you know, the largest percentage in the United States. You see that kind of dwindle happen. So uh, I always always kind of enjoy comparing the U.S. and China um, it, it can be kind of a predeterminer, you know, of, of kind of things to come, you know, cause they, they are kind of the, the open test for, for, for Democrat ideas right now, which, which is crazy. You know, they, they say, you know, not all, not all Democrats are socialists, but all socialists are Democrats. Okay. I think that's a term that gets used from time to time and it's true. It, it's very much true. Yeah, you know it's uh it's really too bad. We could spend honestly, we're gonna spend plenty of plenty more episodes coming up in the future talking about China, talking about all of their human rights violations, talking about the moves that they're making, talking about their crackdown on Hong Kong, talking about their crackdown and and what it will inevitably be, in my opinion, Taiwan. I, it's it's just a matter of time, but you know it's uh it's really too bad, and I I, I find it really interesting when we talk about the American left. So many uh, just have no idea what is exactly going on over there. At least the the many of the, much of the left that I've talked to, they're they're a, a lot of the foreign policy seems to just not uh, not click, or they're they're not exactly interested in it, and they're much more interested in domestic policy. But uh, it, it's it's I just find that kind of interesting just because you know you can see so many if you never compare america to anything that else uh, else is around it you're just going to assume that america is an outlier or you're yeah, not an outlier you're going to assume that everywhere else is better and it's <laughs> the exact opposite and so you know I, I just find that interesting and i almost think that it's on purpose that the uh the the deliberate uh, veil pulled over the eyes of hey don't look over here at China we don't we don't want to look over there oh Cuba yeah that was our fault it was the Cuban embargo that that caused their their communist government or it, it's the Cuban embargo that makes their life so bad over there oh yeah don't look at Venezuela we only want you to look at Sweden or Denmark and even though they themselves would not even call themselves socialist you you bring up sweden and denmark and they like to talk about norway you know and and i won't delve into this too deep but norway is probably one of the most capitalist countries in the world they have privatized everything yeah they have health care everybody has health care and it's done privately um con road construction um all of these services that that we that socialists think that the government should provide the government in Norway provides funding for many of these things, but it's done on a bid basis. It's done, at, uh, they privatize literally everything that can be privatized because guess what? The government sucks at running anything. They are terrible at it. There's nothing that the government does better than private industry. Literally nothing. Not even military. Again, I don't want to dig on our military because I have a lot of respect for those people, but a lot of them end up being private military contractors because guess what? It pays way more and it's done more efficiently. So the, the, the socialist stronghold of the Nordic countries is, is a huge lie. It's a huge, huge lie. It doesn't take much, you know, investigation at all to find out that they have privatized everything because it makes it vastly more affordable. Um, I would love to see our federal government be privatized right down to nothing to be honest with you um that's not a very popular opinion but i 
I don't care. I, I really don't care. 